Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is the faithful servant. Jesus told more than 30 parables to help people learn how to live a life that is pleasing to God. People love not only the miracles that Jesus performed, they love the stories that he told. The parables Jesus used were earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes that he wanted to change. In last week's parable, The Reluctant Neighbor, Jesus taught his disciples what to expect from God when they talked to him. Jesus went on to share two stories. In one, he spoke about a friend who asked a neighbor for help. At first, the neighbor refused to help, but the man shamed him into giving him food for his late arriving guest. Now, God is not at all like the man's neighbor. For example, God never sleeps. He's never bothered by our requests. He will never tell you to go away, and the door to heaven is never closed. The first story is what not to expect from God when we talk to him. The second story tells us what we need to know about the heart of God and what to expect from him when we talk to him. Jesus put it this way, If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Luke chapter 11, verse 13. If a persistent man can move the heart of an unwilling neighbor, how much more will your heavenly Father be moved by your needs? God is moved because we are his children. And Father God loves to respond to his sons and his daughters. Because God is moved by our need, we don't need to beg God to answer our prayer. Prayer is a conversation with God asking him to help meet our needs. Jesus said, everyone who asks receives, and everyone who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. Luke chapter 11, verse 10. Aren't you glad Jesus said everyone? Jesus said, ask, and you will receive. Remember that Jesus said, how much more Will the Heavenly Father give Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The most important gift that Father God wants all his children to receive is the gift of the Holy Spirit. When we receive Holy Spirit, we receive the one who brings the presence and the power of God into our lives. Holy Spirit guides us in the decisions we need to make about what to do and where to go. Holy Spirit releases the provision we need for the things we desire. Holy Spirit releases the power of God to flow through our lives and heal our diseases and set us free. Ask Holy Spirit to fill you with his presence right now. Father, answer the prayer of each one who's prayed for you to fill them with your Holy Spirit. Today's parable, The Faithful Servant, is one of many parables Jesus told on being ready to meet Jesus when he returns to earth. Jesus warned that many of his followers would not be ready to meet him. Now, Peter was so shocked by what Jesus said. He just blurted out, Lord, are you saying this parable is for us or is it for everyone else? Luke chapter 12 And verse 41, he said, Lord, are you saying I'm not ready for your return? Now we know that Peter was not ready for Jesus to be arrested. Jesus knew why he needed to give this warning. Like Peter, many think they are ready for Jesus to return. But in reality, very few are ready for Jesus to return at any moment. Many people put off things they know they need to take care of because they 
believe they still have time to take care of things before Jesus comes. Now, Matthew recorded an extended sermon that Jesus preached on the signs that will appear before his return at the end of the age. Then he turned to his disciples to speak specifically to them about being ready at all times for his return. He said, stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, Luke chapter 12, verse 35. People in the military understand what Jesus meant. For example, when pilots are on duty, they sleep in their uniform so that when the alarm sounds, they can jump out of bed and rush to their aircraft ready to fly. One time I was traveling with a Westerner to an African country. The hotel where we stayed had lost its electricity, so we were each given an oil lamp. The next morning, my friend asked me if I kept my lamp burning all night. I said, yes, but I turned it down very low so that the oil would last all night long. Now, my friend had blown his lamp out when he got in bed, and when he got up early the next morning, his room was completely dark because he did not have a match to relight his lamp. These are illustrations for being spiritually ready at all times for Jesus to return. Jesus continued speaking to his disciples by saying, but concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. Many books have been written speculating about Jesus when Jesus will return. And many people believe that Jesus will return soon. It's good to be ready at all times to meet Jesus when he returns. But he himself said, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. In the light of this truth, Jesus spoke a parable. Be on guard. Keep awake. You do not know at what time he will come. And after saying these things, Jesus shared another story. He said, it's like a man going on a journey. And when he leaves home and puts his servant in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in evening, at midnight, when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and finds you asleep. Mark chapter 13, verse 34 through 36. He ended the parable by saying, What I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. Now, this parable is recorded in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In these accounts, two words are frequently used, guard and alert or stay awake. It's the same word. To be on guard means to see with our spiritual eyes and to be aware of what the Lord is doing. We are to guard against the things which rob us from experiencing God's love. We are to guard against the things that keep us from expressing God's love to the people around us. We're to guard against attitudes that keep us from believing that we have nothing to offer to make our world a better place. To be awake in the natural means to be sleepless. In the spiritual realm, it means to be awake to spiritual danger or spiritual opportunities. Early one morning, the Lord called me by name and asked me the question, Peter, are you awake? After finding no one at my door or around the house, I realized it was Jesus talking to me and asking me a spiritual question. Jesus knew I had an important assignment at 4 a.m. that very morning. He also knew that I needed to get up one hour earlier than I had planned to because he knew I was going to have a problem to solve that I didn't even know that I was going to face. I had enough time. Jesus is not saying we should never sleep, 
But even when we sleep, we need to be ready to get up at a moment's notice. Jesus said he could return during any of the watches of the night. In the parable, he spoke about the four watches of the night that were kept by soldiers in those days. The evening watch was from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The midnight watch was from 9 p.m. to midnight. The rooster crowing was the watch between midnight and 3 a.m. And the morning or the dawn watch was from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, before Jesus ascended back to heaven, he left his followers in charge of spreading his message. Mark says, Jesus put his servants in charge, each with his work, and commanded the doorkeeper to stay awake, Mark 13, 34. Jesus has assigned to each of his followers spiritual work to do. I pray that God helps you discover the specific task that he has given you to do. Matthew said, Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his master has set over his household, to give them their food at the proper time? Matthew chapter 24, verse 45. It's good to give physical food to people who are hungry, but everyone needs spiritual food. Spiritual food is teaching people the word of God and helping them discover the joy of being filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Matthew and Luke spoke about the actions and consequences that unfaithful servants will face. Luke warned, everyone to whom much is given, of him much will be required. And from him to whom they entrust much, they will demand the more. Luke chapter 12 and verse 48. Mark focused on the actions of being a faithful servant. We read, blessed is the servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will set him over all of his possessions. Matthew chapter 24, verse 46 and 47. Now, the lesson in this parable is not that the master was gone too long, but rather that the master returned sooner than was expected. The message of the parable is clear. Jesus is coming, ready or not. If you claim to be a follower of Jesus, but know you're not ready for his return, today is a good day. Right now is the right time to right whatever is wrong and to revive your faith in Jesus. If you're not sure you're ready to meet Jesus when he returns, we invite you to receive him as your Savior today. Accept that he paid for your sins on the cross and thank him for being willing to forgive you of all your sins. Ask Jesus to send Holy Spirit to live inside of you to help you live a life that is pleasing to God. If you just decided to follow Jesus, write to me and I'll share more information with you on the blessing of becoming a child of God. Next week, we'll continue learning from the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.